Hello and welcome to the 40th day of 40 days of restoration. Well done for making it to the end. For the last 40 days, each week in small groups, we've been using a psalm to think about the active steps that we can take to ensure that we put ourselves in the correct place to receive God's restoration. Right back at the beginning, Phil reminded us that God restores wounded souls. That's what he specialises in. Matt encouraged us to pray, but I trust you, even in difficult circumstances. And Paige pointed out that we should learn to praise God even in those difficult circumstances. Christine highlighted how God restores the joy of our salvation when we come to him in repentance. And last week, Nikki asked us to thank God for the, for the forgiveness he provides and to share the joy that brings. So, to Psalm 135. This week, we're studying a psalm of praise, stimulated by a story of restoration. So we're going to focus on God and what we can learn about his character from the psalm and reasons to praise God. A few weeks ago, Matt encouraged us in difficult circumstances to pray, but I trust you. But how do you know you can trust God? I want to listen to what the songwriter has to say and learn what things stimulate him to trust and to praise God. So, if you haven't done so already, please read Psalm 135 together and then have the psalm open in front of you as I talk. Welcome back. So let's think about the structure of the psalm. I want to suggest that the songwriter has a pattern to the thoughts that he's put together. Now bear with me because perhaps you might think this is a little bit boring but I think that if we understand the pattern, we can get to the heart of what the songwriter is trying to say. I'm going to suggest to you that there are two sets of bookends to the psalm which wrap around the central message of the song. So bookend one, and look how verses one to four parallel verses 19 to 21. And the theme is, praise the Lord in both sections. In verse 1 to 4 we are encouraged to praise God because he has chosen Israel or rather he has chosen Jacob. Now when biblical writers call the nation of Israel Jacob they mean to remind you and me of the story of Jacob who was the grandfather of the nation of Israel. There's not much about Jacob's character that would commend him to you. He was a liar a cheat, he had family favourites, and he ran a totally dysfunctional family. And yet God called him and changed his name. So, in verses 1 to 4, God has chosen Israel, but not because they're anything special. So the parallel verses, 19 to 21, were encouraged to praise God because he lives here in Jerusalem. When Solomon's temple was completed, God's presence had visibly filled the temple, confirming God had chosen to live with his people. OK, so next, let's look at the next bookends, the bookends in between or inside the first one. The second bookends, which are verses 5 to 7 and 15 to 18. And the thoughts are parallel, but in this case, contrasting. Verses 5 to 7. God is being con described as the totally uncontainable God. He does whatever he wants. Nothing and no one controls God. He does whatever he wants, wherever he wants, throughout heaven and earth. So contrast this thought with the thought in verses 15 to 18. Here, the uncontainable God is compared to ineffective gods who are shaped by humans' hands, who cannot speak or see or hear or even breathe for themselves, 
and damningly those who make or trust in these idols become just like them. They cannot speak, see, hear, breathe. In other words, they're dead. Dead to God and what he's doing. And so finally to the centre of the song, the most important thing that the songwriter wants you and I to notice. Verses 8 to 14. And here the songwriter is calling to mind a particular story of restoration. God restoring his people Israel from out of Egypt and to their land. Notice who did all the miraculous acts that enabled the restoration to happen. He destroyed the firstborn in each Egyptian home. He performed miraculous signs. He struck down great nations. He gave their landers an inheritance. And the end result, your name endures forever. Your fame for every generation. Some commentators think that the song was composed to be sung by God's people as they completed the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. Another story of restoration. So perhaps the songwriter was intending people to remember the old story of restoration alongside what, was, what God was doing in the present and to recognise that God was in control. And you and I know this side of the cross that all along God was involved in an even bigger story of restoration. That of restoring the relationship between God and humans. And the story of the nation of Israel reaches its climax in the story of the cross. And that now our little personal stories of restoration of how he has been at work in our lives are all swept up into the even bigger story of God's great work of restoration. So to answer the question I posed at the beginning, how do you know you can trust God? One, because he chose you, not because there was anything about you that made him do this, but because it's in his nature to bless people. Number two, because he has chosen to live with his people through his Holy Spirit, which means he won't be moving out any time soon. And chosen not because there's anything special about you or me, but because he loves us. Number three, the uncontainable God is not limited by us if I allow him to begin that work of restoration. And number four, he's done it before. He's still doing it today and one day that work of restoration will be complete when that relationship between God and men and women is fully restored in a new heaven and a new earth. So I've given you the bare bones of the song. I'm going to leave you now to do the hard yards and work out what that means for you today. I've provided some questions and some activities that will hopefully help you think about this a bit more. You don't need to do all of these, but I suggest you choose a couple um, and use them to stimulate a conversation and perhaps lead you to a time of thanking God that he still restores people today. So I hope you have a good time thinking about the reasons to praise God that he is still restoring people today.